As of 2023, there have been four United States presidential assassinations. Abraham Lincoln in 1865, James Garfield in 1881, William McKinley in 1901, and John F. Kennedy in 1963. However, United States leaders were lucky enough to escape assassination on many more occasions than this. While not a comprehensive list of every assassination plot in American history, this is the story of 10 times the President of the United States was able to escape an assassination attempt. Number 1. Andrew Jackson President Jackson was the first U.S. chief executive to escape a documented attempt on his life. It happened at the U.S. Capitol building on January 30, 1835. An out-of-work house painter named Richard Lawrence, who believed himself to be former English king Richard III, made the attempt on Jackson's life. Lawrence also believed that Jackson had killed his father and had stolen his family fortune. By killing Jackson, Lawrence believed he would be restored to the British throne. Lawrence approached Jackson in the east portico of the Capitol building. At the time, Jackson was leaving the funeral for South Carolina U.S. House Representative Warren Davis. Lawrence pulled out a pistol and fired at Jackson. The gun misfired. Lawrence pulled out a second pistol and fired. That one also misfired. The damp air was likely the cause of the misfire because the chance of both guns misfiring is about 1 in 125,000. Both weapons were later tested and they both fired on the very first attempt. Following the shooting attempt, President Jackson lunged at Lawrence and beat him senseless with his hickory cane, yelling, quote, Let me alone, let me alone, I know where this came from. Francis Scott Key, author of the Star-Spangled Banner, actually prosecuted Lawrence in the subsequent trial. Lawrence was found not guilty by way of insanity and spent the rest of his life in an institution. Number 2. Theodore Roosevelt To be clear, Roosevelt was no longer a sitting president when he escaped assassination in 1912. The ex-president was running for a third term as an independent candidate under the Bull Moose Progressive Party ticket. That election season brought him to Milwaukee, Wisconsin on October 14, 1912. A saloon keeper from New York named John Schrank had been stalking TR after a dream he had. Schrank wrote, quote, In a dream, I saw President McKinley sit up in his coffin pointing at a man in a monk's attire in whom I recognized Theodore Roosevelt. The dead president said, This is my murderer. Avenge my death. Schrank approached Roosevelt and shot him once in the chest with a 38 caliber Colt Police Positive Special. Luckily for TR, he had a 50-page speech folded up twice in his chest pocket as well as an eyeglasses case, which slowed the bullet and probably saved his life. After observing that he wasn't coughing up any blood and deciding that his lungs must be all right, Roosevelt refused to go immediately to a hospital. Instead, he arrived at his scheduled campaign stop in Milwaukee, and he gave a 90-minute speech while bleeding through his shirt. His opening comments were, quote, Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. He went to the hospital afterward. Schrank was found legally insane at his trial and institutionalized until his death in 1943. T.R. carried the bullet in his chest for the rest of his life. Number 3. Herbert Hoover President-elect Hoover traveled to Central and South America as part of a goodwill tour prior to his taking the oath of office in March 1929. While traveling through the Andes Mountains in South America, an Argentine anarchist attempted to blow up his train. Luckily for Hoover, the plot was discovered before the bomb could be planted on the train tracks. Famously, after Hoover observed a front-page story about the plot, he tore the page from the rest of his newspaper so that his wife, Lou Henry, wouldn't see it and worry. Quote, It's just as well that Lou shouldn't see it, Hoover reportedly said. Number 4. Franklin D. Roosevelt President-elect Roosevelt traveled to Miami, Florida for a speech on February 15, 1933, just 17 days before the first of his four inaugurations. After a short speech, 
FDR was approached by Chicago Mayor Anton Chermak. Anarchist Giuseppe Zangara then emerged, firing five shots. Every shot missed FDR, but Chermak was mortally wounded and died. Onlookers were also injured. The assassin pled guilty to the murder charge and was executed via the electric chair just over one month later on March 20th, 1933. Most everyone at the time assumed FDR was the target, but over time some wondered if Chermak was the target as the mayor had cracked down on Chicago organized crime. Was it possible Al Capone had ordered a hit on Chermak? We will never know for sure. Number 5. Harry S. Truman It's November 1st, 1950. The White House has been gutted as it undergoes extensive renovations. President Truman is living across the street at the Blair House. Puerto Rican nationalists Oscar Colazzo and Griselio Torresola attempted to storm the home to assassinate Truman. While Truman was an advocate for Puerto Rican self-determination and even appointed the first native-born Puerto Rican governor, Colazzo and Torresola chose to assassinate him in order to bring attention to the island nation's struggle. It was said that they were targeting the system, not the man. White House policemen Joseph Downs and Leslie Kofelt returned fire. Kofelt was mortally wounded, but not before killing Torresola with a shot to the head. Policeman Downs was also injured in the attack. Colazzo was shot in the stomach, but survived. He was sentenced to death after a federal trial, but Truman commuted that sentence to life in prison. President Jimmy Carter later commuted his sentence to time served in 1979 after Colazzo had spent 29 years in jail. Number 6. Richard Nixon On April 13, 1972, in Ottawa, Canada, Arthur Bremer attempted to fire upon President Nixon's motorcade. However, the motorcade passed too fast, and he didn't get a shot. The next day, Bremer thought he saw Nixon's car and went to get his firearm from his hotel room. When he returned, the car was gone. A few weeks after this, Bremer did get a shot on a politician. This time, though, it was Alabama Governor George Wallace. This resulted in Wallace being paralyzed for the rest of his life. In May 1972, President Nixon traveled to Iran. A terrorist group called the People's Mujahideen of Iran set off a bomb at a mausoleum that Nixon was scheduled to visit just 45 minutes later. But that wasn't it for Nixon. On February 22nd, 1974, Samuel Bick intended to kill Nixon by hijacking an airline and crashing it into the White House. At the Baltimore-Washington International Airport, Bick killed a Maryland aviation police officer and hijacked a DC-9. However, the wheel blocks were still in place and the plane could not take off. He shot both pilots, one fatally, but Bick himself was shot by Officer Charles Troyer through the plane window before he could take the plot any further. Barely clinging to life, Bick then shot himself fatally. Number 7. Gerald Ford September 5, 1975, on the grounds of the California State Capitol in Sacramento, a Charles Manson follower named Lynette Fromm attempted to fire a Colt M 1911 at Ford as he reached to shake her hand. She had cartridges in the magazine, but not the firing chamber, causing no gunfire to ensue. She was quickly restrained by the Secret Service and sentenced to life in prison. She was eventually released in 2009. Just 17 days later, on September 22, 1975, this time in San Francisco, Sarah Jane Moore fired a revolver at President Ford from 40 feet away. As she fired, a bystander named Oliver Sippel grabbed Moore's arm. Luckily, the shot missed Ford and hit a wall instead, although a cab driver was injured. Moore served 30 years in jail before being paroled. Number 8. Ronald Reagan One of the most famous near assassinations in United States history, President Reagan was shot by John Hinckley Jr. on March 30, 1981 in Washington, D.C. outside of the Washington Hilton Hotel. Hinckley had almost attempted to assassinate President Carter the previous year during the campaign season, but backed out. Hinckley fired six shots at Reagan, a bullet ricocheted off the presidential limousine and hit Reagan under his arm, breaking a rib, puncturing his lung, and causing serious internal bleeding. 
He was taken to George Washington University Hospital, where he was stabilized in the emergency room and underwent emergency surgery. Reagan would wind up being released from the hospital on April 11, 1981. Three others were wounded in the assassination attempt. Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy, police officer Thomas Dallahanty, and White House Press Secretary James Brady. In the aftermath of the shooting, every major media outlet actually reported that Brady had died before issuing retractions. Brady was permanently disabled due to the shooting, and he also suffered brain damage. He became a fierce advocate for more strict gun control laws over the course of the rest of his life. The Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act, a.k.a. the Brady Bill, was named after him. Hinckley said he committed the shooting in order to impress actress Jodie Foster. He was found mentally ill and sent to an institution. He was later released in 2016. Number 9. Bill Clinton October 29, 1994, Francisco Martin Duran fired around 30 shots towards the White House from a fence near the North Lawn. He saw a group of men in dark suits that he thought included President Clinton. Clinton was on the property at the time, but inside the White House. The would-be assassin was tackled by three tourists and later sentenced to 40 years in prison. Nobody was seriously injured. Then, on November 24, 1996, President Clinton went to Manila for the APEC Forum. Clinton's motorcade was rerouted at the last minute before it was to pass over a bridge after a credible report came in that a bomb was on the bridge. A team later discovered that there was in fact a bomb under that bridge, and it was discovered that the bombing plot was put in motion by none other than Osama bin Laden. Number 10, George W. Bush. On February 7, 2001, President Bush was in the residence area of the White House when a man named Robert Pickett, standing outside the perimeter fence on the property, began firing a 38 Special Revolver towards the White House. He was shot in the knee by Secret Service and arrested. He was later given a sentence of three years in prison, followed by three years parole. However, the closest call came on May 10, 2005. President Bush traveled to Freedom Square in Tbilisi, Georgia. While the president was giving a speech, a man threw a Soviet-made grenade at him. He pulled the pin, but a handkerchief was tightly wrapped around the grenade, which prevented it from exploding due to it keeping the safety lever in place. The grenade landed about 65 feet from the podium after it struck someone. The would-be assassin escaped on that day, but was arrested two months later. He was convicted and given a life prison sentence.